Welcome to the part 2 video of buying your first airbrush kit. On this video, I will give you ideas on buying things that are essentials for your first airbrush exploration. Of course, most of you watching probably knew already that airbrush needs also an air compressor for it to work. The number one on my list it's the compressor that has a large tank for large capacity for air. I'm talking about 15 liters and up. I use a 24 liters regular compressor at this moment of recording this video. Why do I recommend this? You can't go wrong on buying a large heavy duty compressor. It fits to every airbrush job, whether as a hobbyist or a full time artist. The larger the tank means the longer the motor will have time to cool down. If the machine is on its normal temperature, the longer you can use it. Unlike when buying mini compressors or no tank compressors, you cannot use them continuously for several hours without the risk of damaging the parts because of extreme heating. There are two types of compressors, the silent type and the regular type. If the noise is not an issue for you, buy the regular compressor. Though noisy, but in my opinion, they will last longer than the silent type compressors. You can abuse this type of compressor. But the silent type is more practical to buy. You don't have to worry about your neighbors getting disturbed or getting angry because of the annoying noise. You can even airbrush at night. Number two on the list are the mini compressors. Buy this if you want a basic and small size compressor. They are typically silent type from 9 liters down to 3 liters. This is a good choice if you are just planning to use it on miniatures, gunpla, or for non heavy duty job. Small tank compressors need to load more often because they run out of air easily, which means less time for it to cool down so therefore the more it is prone from overheating and extreme heating is bad for compressors so you need to stop for a moment and let the machine rest for a while for it to cool down if your plan is to paint on shirts and you bought a siphon feed airbrush don't buy these compressors siphon feed needs at least 40 psi to be good for shirts and most mini compressors will work hard for that high psi and needed to load many times so often. This means mini compressors are best for a short period of airbrushing if you are working on a low to medium PSI or around 15 to 30 PSI. The third and the last on the list of compressors are the no tank compressors, desktop compressors and the handheld compressors. These types are always on when you press the trigger for air meaning they will keep on running while you use your airbrush. They are branded heavy duty tankless compressors that can be used heavily but if you are buying the cheap ones and planning to use them for painting in a long period and serious jobs you are just wasting your money. These compressors are only designed for really quick jobs like nail painting or cake maybe for coloring some parts. Some desktop compressors can only last for a week, even though they are slightly being used. If you can buy a branded tankless compressors, they are good and will last very long, but if you just want to try the airbrush and not gonna be serious about it, and you don't mind spending a little money, you can buy the handheld or the desktop mini compressors and good luck to you. The next thing to buy is the hose. Some airbrush set doesn't come with the hose, so you have to buy them separately. Not all airbrush hose has the same size of fittings, but the most common airbrush hose is the 1.8 BSP, and most of the generic airbrushes use this size, just like the Iwata airbrushes. For budget users, they have a conversion adapter that came with the airbrush, or it can be bought separately. And not just for airbrush, 
Most of the large compressors also have a 1 fourth BSP male fittings. So to connect your 1 8 hose to it, you should buy a 1 fourth BSP female to 1 8 BSP male. Or you have an option to buy a hose with 1 fourth on the other end and 1 8 on the other end. So now your setup is almost complete. Of course, you're gonna need paint. For beginners, they are most likely to buy paints that are airbrush ready. They are water based paints and also urethanes. Research on them and the brands, and just to name a few common brands, they are Createx, Tamiya. Golden, Vallejo, and Angelus. So these are the brands and some of them have different types of paints and not just acrylics. So it's your job to know what are you going to paint on and what type of paint fits the job. And don't forget the reducers. I use water-based paints and I rarely use paint reducers or thinners. I only use distilled water. For chemical based paints, you should really buy the specific reducer for your paint. Another thing that you must have is the cleaning kit or maintenance kit. Airbrush needs cleaning after every use. For me, I only use this interdental brush, alcohol and water. So alcohol, because acrylic paints can be removed only by alcohol. There are also products particularly made for airbrush cleaning, like this Iwata airbrush cleaner. Some use lacquer thinner to clean chemical based paints like urethane. But be careful, lacquer thinners can dissolve or damage the o-rings of airbrushes, so be aware of that. Some other materials for cleaning are bathroom tissues or any cloth to dry your airbrush, cotton, wet wipes for your hands or airbrush, and or sometimes stick or cotton buds. And not necessarily needed but it's good to have is the cleaning station. So after you clean your airbrush and needs to flush the cleaning solution, you can spray it inside so the fumes will be contained inside. But I use a broken water container. I prefer to use this and I don't think of necessity to buy a cleaning station. The last things on this video are airbrush stand so you can place your airbrush safely when you're not using it. Number two is the moisture trap or air filter. I don't use this though my regular air compressor doesn't have one but because it has a large tank I get a pretty dry air. But if you have a mini compressor that doesn't have a built-in air filter, you should really buy one like this to attach to your airbrush or this to attach directly to a compressor. Without this, the moisture will mix in the air and you will notice your paint is gonna splatter and that's gonna spray nicely. Again, buy this if you are using a small compressor without a moisture trap. Number three is a lubricant or oil for smoother airbrush trigger and parts. And lastly, mask. Whatever the paint you use, always wear mask. Fumes came from airbrush are not meant to be inhaled and some paint company are so honest that they indicated the health risk of inhaling the paint. Don't copy every airbrush artist on YouTube. Who doesn't wear mask yes they are pro but it doesn't mean their body is immune to dangers or cancers paint is a chemical not intended to be inhaled safety first my friends thanks for watching and if you are new to my channel hit that subscribe button ring the notification bell so you won't miss any update 
and see you on the next video. Bye for now. Salute.